Hey everybody, this is James Mahoney from Black Lobster Academy. I hope you're doing well so far and not too overwhelmed with the power of Photoshop. In the last video, we covered some of the main tools besides the paintbrushes, such as the eraser, the stamp or clone tool, dodge and burn brushes, smudge and sponge brushes, as well as the healing brush and the move tool. In this episode, we're going to cover the selection tools. Selections are how you tell Photoshop which things you want to work with, or even what blank areas you want to work in. Just as there are lots of different kinds of things you want to select, there are lots of different ways of selecting things. I'm going to cover the main ones that get used the most. Perhaps the most common selection tool is the Marquee tool. You can access this with the M key, and then drag out a rectangle. Notice the marching ants around your shape. That shows you what's selected. As with all the tools, the Options bar lets you modify its behavior. To unselect, use Command-D. Consistent with many things in Photoshop, you can hold down the Shift key while dragging out a shape to constrain the shape. In this case, it's constrained to be a square. From the Tools palette, you can switch the Marquee tool so you can drag out an oval shape instead. You nearly always want to leave anti-alias checked to avoid those uh, ugly jagged edges and feather is usually set to zero unless you want a softer selection. A lot of times you're selecting around something. In this case you can start your marquee shape in the center and hold down the option key and the shape will remain centered on your starting point. Of course, you can hold down both the Shift and Alt key at the same time. Often, you just want to select everything on a layer. You can do this by using the keyboard shortcut Command-A. Maybe even more commonly used to make selections is the Lasso tool. You can grab this with the L keyboard shortcut. This tool allows you to draw a selection freehand. You can also switch the tool to create straight lines. To make the selection, the shape must be a closed area. You can also use the command key and click to close the shape automatically from the last pen click. So in this example, it only takes three pen clicks to make a rectangle. If you have the straight line tool active and hold down the alt key, it will temporarily switch to the freehand tool. This is useful for mixing straight lines and curves. Photoshop has a lot of modifier keys like this. And I suggest you get in the habit of just trying the modifiers out on other things, and I know you'll find some uh, really useful things. Like some other tools in Photoshop, the Shift key will constrain the lines of the straight edge guy to 90 degrees as well as 45 degrees. Okay, moving on. I nearly wet my pants when I first learned this trick years ago. You can quickly make a selection from the alpha of any layer by command clicking on that layer's thumbnail. Sweet, huh? Try the quick selection tool. With this tool, you sort of paint in the area you want selected, and Photoshop tries to find the edges based on contrast. Sometimes it works great. Or maybe you need to whip out the magic wand. This will make a selection based on connected colors. It also sometimes does what you want. With these tools, you can fiddle with the options to get it to behave. For example, watch what happens with a different tolerance set. Once you've made a selection with any method, you'll see the marching ants that indicate the selected area. You can then do lots of things to change that selection. For instance, with the Marquee tool, you can click inside the area and drag the selection around. 
If I do that with the Command key pressed, it will cut and move the selected pixels. But without the Command key, it will just move the selection, not the pixels. You can nudge the selection in any direction by one pixel using the arrow keys. For most of the selection tools, once you have a selection, hold down Option and Command to subtract from the selection. Or use Shift and Command to add to it. Once you start to drag, you can let go of the modifier key. Notice the little icons by the cursor? Photoshop does a good job with all its tools and modifiers at letting you know what's happening by changing the cursor icons. This is great when you're learning and aren't certain which modifier does what. Similarly, you can add and subtract using layer selections. Hold down Option and Command to subtract from the selection. Or use Shift and Command to add to it. If you hold down all those keys, the Shift, Option, and Command keys, and click in the Layer Thumbnail, you can select the union of the selected areas, or the shape where they overlap. You can transform any selection using an interface that's pretty much identical to the Shape Transformation tool. You access this most easily by using the awkward keyboard shortcut Shift, Option, Command, D. It takes me two hands to do this one. Grab the handles and transform your selection. This works like the shape transformation tool we cover more in the next video, so I'm not going to go into it right here. You hit enter to make the transformation or hit escape to cancel it. Most pop-up UIs in Photoshop work like that. So once you've made a selection, check out all the cool stuff you can find in the Select pull-down menu. Here are some of the most useful things you can do. Under Modify, there's a flyout menu that's particularly useful. You can expand your selection by however many pixels you want, or similarly contract your selection, or feather your selection. Feathering will soften the edges of your selection. It's the same as up here on the Options bar, but it's after the fact. The numbers you enter here will depend a lot on the size of the image you're working with. And here's what it would look like if it were feathered. Here's what the selection looks like without the feather. You can also invert a selection from this menu, but I recommend you learn this keyboard shortcut as it's something you'll probably use a lot. It's Shift Command I. It's Shift Command I. Well, that pretty much covers the basics of making selections in Photoshop. In the next video, we cover what I consider to be the most powerful feature of digital illustration, layers. I hope that was useful, and as always, I really appreciate any likes, comments, and subscribes.